This is another in the first raid series where I read a poem by a poet I don't know or know very little about, and I just read it for the sheer joy of it, for that initial reason people come to poetry, that like excitement when you read something. So I don't read these to teach them or explain them or anything like that. It's just my first impressions of them. Um, I think it's a good way just to, to meet people, to see how it strikes you at the beginning. So this is from Poetry. Um, the poetry Magazine. I'm not a huge fan of Poetry Magazine. Sorry, Poetry Magazine. I just, in the past, uh, it's had a pretty wide swings up and down and has been a little too conservative to my taste. It's got a new editor who, you know, maybe will change the direction of it. So we'll see. Hopefully that, uh, that works out that way. This one is... Beatriz Miralles de Imperial, who I don't know at all, um, really know nothing about this this poet. Let's go to translator here, uh, Leila Benitez James. So I'm just going to read it. It's kept this in English and Spanish. I like, haven't read any of them. I just I did either one of them. They're both here. Um, I think it's fun if you know a little bit of the other language to kind of look at it uh, and see what happens. Um, this one. So the form, it's a free verse or open form, and you can tell that pretty quickly by looking at it, and it shrinks. This, I kind of think is interesting, the poem shrinks, so it goes from long to short line, it progressively goes shorter. It does this in both languages, although it's, I think, it almost feels like it's more uh, clear in uh, English that way, but it's, it does it in both. The... Kind of one difference, just looking at the translation, there's no capitalization or punctuation or anything in Spanish. Um, the, the I's are capitalized here in English, so I wonder why the translator did that um, well, right off the bat. But anyway, let's just read it and see what we can make of it. So this one, I write until my face is erased. Well, this is an interesting concept. Uh, as a writer, I okay, you know, I think this is especially true right now because I think we're going through this period of identity poetry that uh, has kind of taken over the poetry world in a large spot. I think for a while there we were, you know, I can we go back to the early 20th century, the, you know, experimental and traditional poetry kind of split in English. And it kind of fractured off in Spanish too in different ways. Um, and then it, then, you know, in, in English, we came back together a little bit. Um, and then there, there's all these, like, s micro splits these days. So I kind of think of the, the poets I kind of grew up with are not in the main tradition. They're kind of in this little alternative tradition, the ones that I'm most interested in. But there is this main tradition, and the main tradition is largely gone identity poetry in the U.S. Um, and, and it's taking in identity poets from other parts of the world as the first line of translation. So I find that kind of interesting that here, this is a writer's thing, I feel like. It could be beyond that, but I write until my face is erased. Like that's how you write till your face is gone. And I don't know whether that's because this speaker wants to get beyond what's there on the face, you know, what it's supposed to look like, what we're supposed to present, or if it's getting beyond the identity, which is what I thought about with the identity poetry, is getting beyond this identity concept to become just writer, so you can write beyond a single identity. You can write other things. It's almost uh, that kind of concept. It goes against write what you know. It's uh, it's not. It's write what you can instead. So. Right until my face is erased. And this might be something else, you know. I could play on other things like, you know, um, what our face is supposed to look like in terms of gender or public presentation or anything like that. It could be a beyond writer. So right until my face is erased, only who I am no longer can tell me. Only who I am no longer can tell me. Well, this is kind of interesting to me. I paused a little bit because in the reading, we have no punctuation here. So you can read these all together. You can read them as two separate kind of sentences with no punctuation, or as separate lines. I write until my face is erased, only who I am no longer. And then can tell me. So this one, you know, I'm taking this second and third line together in this. So I write 
until my face is erased, only who I am no longer, which is that kind of disappearing of identity. Only who I am no longer can tell me is that only that thing you become, that who you become beyond the face can say who this person is. But it's a me right here, and it's really kind of interesting to me because we're playing off the idea of me as a person, but also me as a speaker in a poem. So it's like once the identity has been erased, the speaker in the poem can come out, but also once the identity has been erased or the public portrayal of that face has been erased, that person can come forward. So it's this kind of kind of almost anti-identity, um, anti-current, I don't know, this feels like the current uh, push in society to like express your identity, your culture, who you are, and like that's what you've become. It's almost like going back to, you know, getting beyond that. So I, I think it's a fairly interesting little piece in, in Spanish. Um, it's pretty straightforward in terms of it. I like the, the translation. It's a nice track. Actually, the translation works, it seems like, pretty well from the Spanish. Um, so it's a nice, uh, it's kind of nice to see them kind of match up so closely like this. Um, the only thing is, I, like I said, I wonder about the I because I feel like in uh, with the lowercase in Spanish, it's almost getting rid of, it's almost playing off that getting rid of the identity by lowercasing it, whereas here it's highlighted more um, with the uppercase I. So I almost wonder if that would be, good. sorry about the reminder popped up at the bottom, whether that would be good um to have interesting interesting nonetheless it definitely makes me want to read more of this uh, poet's work like i i you know i feel like there's this trend lately to go longer in poetry and write really complex long pieces where the books all go together and I, and i i tend to like books that all fit together but i miss some of the early poems that really pulled me in which were just like short poems that made me think or made me excited and I kind of think this one this is one of those that does that